days and nights did it rain during the Great Flood. The Great Flood, a cataclysmic event of divine judgment recorded in the book of Genesis, lasted for 40 days and 40 nights, inundating the earth with torrential rainwaters and submerging all terrestrial life beneath its floodwaters. The account of the Great Flood, found in Genesis 6-9, describes how God, grieved by humanity's wickedness and corruption, resolved to destroy all living creatures with a global deluge while preserving the righteous through the ark constructed by the righteous Noah. The rainwaters poured forth upon the earth for 40 consecutive days and nights, covering the highest mountains and eradicating all life except for those aboard the ark. The duration of the floodwaters lasted for 150 days before receding and allowing the ark to come to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The Great Flood serves as a potent symbol of divine judgment, cleansing, and renewal, offering theological insights into God's justice, mercy, and covenantal faithfulness. Which prophet was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind? Elijah, one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament, was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind in a miraculous event recorded in 2 Kings 2 verses 1 to 18. Elijah's ascent to heaven, often referred to as his translation or rapture, marks the culmination of his prophetic ministry and serves as a testament to his unique relationship with God. As Elijah and his disciple Elisha journeyed from Gilgal to Bethel, Jericho, and the Jordan River, they were accompanied by groups of prophets who foretold Elijah's impending departure. At the Jordan River, Elijah struck the waters with his mantle, parting them, allowing him and Elisha to cross on dry ground. Upon reaching the opposite bank, a fiery chariot and horses of fire appeared, separating Elijah from Elisha, and Elijah was taken up into heaven in a whirlwind, leaving behind his mantle for Elisha. Elijah's translation into heaven symbolizes his vindication as a faithful prophet of God and the continuity of God's prophetic witness in Israel. Who was the first woman created according to the Bible? According to the biblical narrative in the book of Genesis, the first woman created was Eve, who was formed by God from Adam's rib as a companion and helper suitable for him. Eve's creation is depicted in Genesis 2 verses 18 to 25, where God, having observed Adam's solitary state, declares, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. In response to Adam's need for companionship, God causes Adam to fall into a deep sleep, takes one of his ribs, and forms Eve from it. Adam awakens to behold Eve, declaring, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called, woman, for she was taken out of man. The creation of Eve from Adam's rib underscores the intimate relational bond between man and woman, their shared humanity, and their mutual dependence on one another. Eve's role as the mother of all living beings, her participation in the fall, and her enduring significance in biblical and theological discourse make her a central figure in the narrative of creation and redemption. What did Moses hold up to part the Red Sea? Moses, the great leader and lawgiver of Israel, held up his staff to part the Red Sea, facilitating the miraculous deliverance of the Israelites from the pursuing Egyptian army. The account of the parting of the Red Sea is found in the book of Exodus, chapters 14 to 15, where Moses, acting under divine instruction, leads the Israelites out of Egypt following their liberation from slavery. As the Israelites reach the shores of the Red Sea, they find themselves hemmed in by the sea in front of them and the advancing Egyptian army behind them. In response to their cries of fear and despair, Moses stretches out his hand over the sea, and the Lord causes a strong east wind to blow dividing the waters and creating a dry path through the midst of the sea. With the waters miraculously parted, the Israelites cross over to safety, while the pursuing Egyptians are engulfed by the returning waters, drowning in the sea. The parting of the Red Sea serves as a definitive demonstration of God's power, faithfulness, and deliverance, confirming His covenantal promises to His people and establishing Moses as a preeminent figure in Israel's history. What was the name of the man who replaced Judas Iscariot as an apostle? Matthias, a faithful follower of Jesus and one of the seventy disciples appointed by Jesus during his earthly ministry, was chosen to replace Judas Iscariot as one of the twelve apostles following Judas' betrayal and subsequent death. The selection of Matthias is recorded in the Book of Acts, Chapter 1, where the remaining eleven apostles, led by Peter, recognized the necessity of filling the vacancy left by Judas among the apostolic circle. Drawing upon Old Testament precedent and guided by prayer, the apostles nominated two qualified candidates, Matthias and Barzabas, also called Justice, to be considered for apostolic ministry. After casting lots to discern God's choice, Matthias was selected and officially numbered among the twelve apostles, becoming a witness to Jesus' resurrection and an emissary of the gospel. 
Matthias' appointment serves as an affirmation of the apostolic office and the continuity of Jesus' mission to proclaim the kingdom of God and make disciples of all nations.